All right, guys, how's it going? Josh here, um, and today uh, we are going to do a Maya tutorial. Today is my uh, it is my very first Maya tutorial, and we are going to be kind of texturing a sphere to create our beautiful planet Earth. Well, you can see right here, spinning in the uh, viewport, and you can see the render of it right here. It's a quick render. I didn't really mess with settings all that much to come to get this, but it is probably about an intermediate level um, thing. There's a lot of node connecting to do and stuff like that. A couple tricks um, that are helpful to know as well. Um, I'll only give intermediate because it's not really any modeling whatsoever. You create three spheres and that's about it. So um, yeah, this is what we're creating. Now for this project I'm going to be including all of the textures. Um, in the description below there's a link that takes you to a drive folder with all the textures in there. All the textures are uh, from the NASA's Blue Marble project. Um, I'll include a link in that as well, uh, in the description for that as well. And you can go there and you can find all the months, like it, it, it has um, a, the texture of the earth for all the months of the year. Um, I chose September, I, I, liked, I think that had a good balance of everything. So what you guys will see here is September's month, but you can go choose any month you want. Obviously like December's going to have way more snow, July's going to have none, you know. So, and if you guys want all those textures to make a time lapse of all the months, that's where you can go, um, and I'll include a link to that as well. So you can see over here that in the hypershade that this is all that we'll need to make uh, to create this. We're going to need quite a few different, um, quite a few different shaders, a mix between mental ray shaders and Maya shaders. Um, so let's go ahead and we can start this. I'm going to minimize these. We can start this. I'm going to stop this as well. Also, sorry if I sound like I'm going really fast. There's a lot to cover here. I don't want this to take way too quick, but I'm going to be as detailed as I can. I don't want this to be a super long video. I kind of feel like it is, but we'll see. Um, if I'm going along like this, it'll be... Okay, new scene. There we go. Um, yeah, we'll save this one. Continue. All right, I'm going to turn this on. Okay, there's our grid. I'm going to do one, more, one thing real quick. I'm going to set my project just to make sure that this project is going to be set in my solar system. Um, project. There we go. And by doing that, I'll get really quick access to the textures in the hypershade. All right. To start this, we are going to start with a plane, simple plane, as you can see right here. I'm just kidding. The Earth isn't flat. Duh. All right. But to actually start this, we are going to be creating our planet, and that is going to be composed of three layers. We're going to have the surface. Then we will have um, our cloud layer, and then we will have our atmosphere layer. So three different spheres, all um, each one slightly bigger than the last. So we're going to start with the Earth sphere. Let's come in here at that, and then I'm going to hit spacebar to get into my uh, front view mode. Hold D and V. Okay, now doing that, I can move this around, and I'm going to move it by the Y axis and snap it to the bottom vert, and then hold X and move it so it snaps it to the grid. Just like that. Now it's on top. You don't have to do this. I just like to work in zero space. Or work in positive. I don't know. It just seems neater to me, I guess. Okay. And actually, I'm going to move this up. That's right. I'm going to move this up a meter. So we're going to go up to like two. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to freeze transform and center its pivot. You can also find those in window or modify, freeze transform, and center pivot. Okay. Now I'm also going to set this to 32. Set it now because you won't be able to set it later after you delete the history or after we duplicate it, you won't be able to set it again. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control and D to make a new, uh, new to copy exactly the, the sphere I had. Make it slightly bigger. I'm going to make this point, or 1.001. No, I lied. 1.01. .01. No, 1.01. .01. There we go. So now it's a, I believe it's a tenth of a meter the size. I mean, let me see this real quick. Uh, if we go here, we can see it. Yeah, that's about right. 1.001 bigger. So 0 0.01 bigger than the Earth. That's going to be the cloud layer. It's going to be 0 0.01 meters above the Earth. Okay. And the Earth is only one meter big. So that's pretty big. Or two meters in diameter, one meter radius. All right. Anyways. And now we are going to do the same exact thing. And we're going to hit Control and D. And we're going to make a new one. And I'm going to make that even bigger. I'm going to bring that up to... 1.03, I believe. 
Yeah, that's gonna bring it two. Oh no, that's gonna be. Yeah, that's gonna be two above the clouds, three above the earth. That actually might be too much. I'm gonna do one point zero two, and I'm gonna bring my clouds down a little bit because there is a noticeable gap when you render these. So you wanna make this. This isn't super important, but you know, not five. One point zero zero five. Not super important, but uh, it can uh, get a little noticeable if you're at certain angles. That might be too close. I don't know. You know what? I'm just going to go back 1.00, 1.01. Call it a day. I'm going to move this one to 1. I already taken too much time with this stuff. All right. There we go. All right. So we have here our Earth. So I'm going to call this Earth underscore surface. All right. I'm going to call this one Earth underscore clouds. And call this one Earth underscore at mo. Where am I at? There we go. All right. And I'm going to select them all and Command G. There we go, and I'm going to call this Earth. Naming conventions are super important. I plan on doing all um, all the planets in this in this scene, so it's going to be really important in here. So, But we're going to start with Earth, plus the moon and maybe other moons. So this will be filled out with planets and moons and the sun um, eventually. But we're going to start with Earth. So here we go. We have our Earth made up of our uh, atmosphere, clouds, and surface. I'm actually going to move this around real quick. Move this to the bottom. Just that's kind of okay. There you go. I'm gonna hide these two because we are not gonna use them. So I'm gonna Control H and hide, and I'm gonna sh bring back the shaded view. There we go. Now I'm gonna change this over to 64. So while the other two are at 32, okay, these are the uh, the Earth surface is gonna be 64 by 64. Now it's not necessary for these to be that high, um, but the Earth surface can get noticeable. So also, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to smooth all the surfaces, um, all the edges. So by having it, make sure it's selected. Hold Shift, right click, soften, and then soften edge. And you can see that it kind of smoothed out the edges pretty nicely. Made it a pretty nice smooth sphere. I'm actually gonna bring these back real quick and do the same with these. Shift H to bring them back. Okay, atmosphere. Oop, wrong one. Hold Shift, soften hard edge, and then soften edge. You can see that it really smoothed that out. But you can still see a little bit there, but it did smooth that out. Now we'll hide that, and then the clouds. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna do a harden just so. Uh, right. Let's, you can kind of see what it looks like right now. So a harden edge. There we go. Now you can really see what it looks like with a hard edge. Now we just want to smooth those edges. What it does is it actually smooths smooths the normals or softens the normals. I'm sorry. Soften edge. There we go. So it kind of tricks the lighting into making it seem like it's smooth instead of hard edges. All right, and we'll hide that. Control H. So I'll be working on the Earth surface. Now let's bring up, I believe, yep. Let's bring up these here, and this is kind of what we're aiming for. This render. There's a bunch of stuff going on here. I don't even know what this is. All right, whatever. First things first. Oh, let me do one more thing. There we go. Get that perspective. Actually, let me do a couple of things. We're going to want to create a light. Um, light. Directional light. That's what I'm going to use. And minimize that again. All right. Bring this back. Pull this up. And just kind of rotate this. Oh, we got to turn the light on. You know, and just rotate this. You know. If you don't know anything about directional lights, they do not need any sort of... Uh, they, they only rely on rotation. Uh, moving it and scaling it doesn't do anything. So we'll just do something like that. That works for me. All right, let's go back to this view and pull these back up. There we go. I'm going to turn this guy on right here. All right, and let's go into our render settings. Just trying to get everything set up real quick. All right, we're in Maya software. We want Mental Ray. OK, one more thing. If you don't see Mental Ray um, in that selection, you're going to want to go to Window up here. Setting Preferences, uh, Plugin Manager, all at the bottom you'll see Maya to Mental Ray right here. And you can get Mental Ray from the Autodesk website, it's 100% free, and it's a fantastic renderer. Free renderer anyways, it takes, it uh, can be time consuming, but it's a really nice renderer. 
Okay, and we're gonna go to quality. 0 0.25 is fine. Ah, that's fine. We'll keep it gauze for now. Mental ray fine. Common. Now I like. I'm in a 4K um, screen, so I like to just put it at 3840 by 2160, which is 4K resolution. But I'm not gonna actually work in that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I need like an absolute supercomputer to work in that. And I have a decent computer, but not a supercomputer, and I don't need that. Okay. So now we're going to go over here to Options and Test Resolution, and we're going to change that down to 25% of 3840 by 2160. So actually, we're going to be testing it in 960 by 540 pixels, which is a lot more manageable. Okay. Now. Oh, I'm missing something. That's what I'm missing. There we go. Create. We're going to start this with a medium material X passes. We're going to start with the day, the day shader, what the Earth is going to look like during the daytime. Just the surface, not the clouds or atmosphere or anything, just the surface. So we're going to want to go down to Mental Ray Materials and create a Media Material X Passes. Alright, and we're just going to grab that network to kind of clear everything, center it. There we go. And we can take, I'm going to zoom into here a little bit. We can take our outliner, which I have right here. We take our Earth surface, and we can right click and assign a material to selection. Or you can just mouse, middle mouse it right onto it. Either way, it works fine. All right, and we're just going to start off by naming this. I'm going to name this Earth Day underscore Media Material X Passes. There we go. Like I said, naming things is very important. It's going to get really confusing. There's going to be lots of nodes, so you're going to want to make sure you do that. And we're going to start with the color. So you can either do it a few different ways. You can go find the file node, whatever, or you can just click on this file. It should be like the first one that pops up. That's what we want because we want to put a picture into it. And here's our file node. Click on this manila folder, and it should take you. If you set your project, if you created a project window and set your project inside of that project window, it should take you right here to your source images folder where you have your textures. And we want Earth, and I want Earth Day Color. I provided, uh, these are all the textures I provided that you can download. Um, I provided two different color ones, whatever one you want. I'm just going to use the regular color. This also like kind of highlights like the ridges under the ocean and like the plates that the, um, that the continent sit on. I'm not going to go with that. That's not necessarily realistic, but it can have a cool effect. I'm just going to go with the natural color. There we go. We can see right here in our mental ray preview um, window here that it applied perfectly. Um, also, one more thing. With when it comes to laying out UVs, like you haven't seen me do it yet, that's because you don't need to. Let me select that and just open up the UV um, editor. These textures are 4K wide by 2K tall, but it kind of crunches them down into into this one by one into like a into this yeah basically just crunches them down into a one one by one square. Um, but it does apply it to the sphere perfectly in like perfect space and it had by default, the UVs are laid out just how you need them to, so you don't have to worry about that at all. So X out of there, and bring up the hypershade again. Okay, next thing um, we are going to work on is, let me turn the material on, there we go, now we can see it over here. Purchase to sweet. Alright, now let's go and work on our bump. We'll apply the bump next. So I am just going to click on this, on the checker box next to it, and I'm going to click File. Now there's another node you need in between the file and the material. Okay, you'll see that right. Okay, it was hiding from me. Sneaky little Maya. Okay, you'll need a bump 2D1, but if you just click that and file, it'll create one in there for you automatically. So let's lay this out a little better. Okay, and then what that does is if you just had this, you would apply the um, the file node into the bump value line right here. So you, this is where the that file line, that file node is plugged into right there. But we want to come here and apply a texture. This is the overall bump, I believe. So overall bump is just earth underscore bump dot jpeg. It's a nice, really nice actually, grayscaled um, bump of the earth. And this highlights like ridges and valleys and mountain ranges and whatnot. Okay, and we can actually solo this. This looks pretty cool. If we solo this, we can see this right here, how it does that. But one crazy thing that Maya likes to do is start on a super, super high setting for bump. We do not want a point a one bump. We're gonna try on a point one bump. Okay, we're gonna look at that, and that's still way too much. Doesn't look like much, and it looks cool when it does that, but it is still just way too much. So we're gonna come down, and we're gonna actually have that 0.05, which is actually 
still probably too much when you when you're thinking realistically because we're out in space that would make these ridges miles high but we are you know kind of exaggerating here a little bit to get that cool effect so we're gonna leave it there I'm not gonna be messing around with like dials and sliders too much numbers too much in here I just want to show you how to set this up and then based on that you guys can adjust those sliders to pretty much just how you want all right so I'm gonna name this really quick to land underscore uh, land underscore bump. There we go. Okay, now coming back to this, we're going to do the same thing. Click the checker box with a standard bump, and we're going to click file. And it hit it on me again, right here. Okay, click the manila folder, and we're going to look for do, 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 uh, ocean bump 8K. This is an 8K texture map, versus the other ones are 4K texture maps. Um, I created this texture map. I used the, um, one of the files, um, the black and white file from, from NASA, but when I, I applied a noise to it to kind of get that subtle ripple of the, of the oceans, not necessarily necessary, but I wanted it just, again, to kind of enhance that detail. But 4K just was the, the noise. Each individual pixel was still not small enough at 4K texture sizes. So at 8K, it was twice as dense um, as far as the ratio goes. And it looked a little better. So I went with an 8K file. It's a little bigger, but it looks a lot better. So let's solo this out. Try that. There we go. Now you can see that that's crazy too, right? I did a pretty good job of keeping that 50% gray as well, if I do say so myself. There's some there's some little spots in there, but you won't notice those at all. Um, especially because this is at 1. We're going to take that down to almost 0. 0. 0. I'm going to do 5 for now and enter. You'll be like, oh, where's that? It's still there. Trust me. It's still there. You can slightly see it. That might, that still is way too much. I mean, even, you know, from out here, if you can see those ripples, those ripples would represent tidal waves. <laughs> That's That would be the scale that we would be seeing it at. But we don't need to, we're, we're, again, we're exaggerating a little bit to get that detail. 0 0.005, I probably would turn that down a little bit, but I'm going to, just to see it more, I'm going to keep it on there for now. All right, that is our bump. Oh, let's name this to ocean underscore bump. There we go. Not boomo. Bump. There we go. Okay, let's go back to our shader. Wait a second. I think that's everything. I'm just kind of trying to do all this by memory. All right. That's everything as far as that goes. Okay. Next, we're going to work off of one more map that we need. So we're actually going to come over here and I'm going to create a file. Um, you guys can search these, just search file up here and then you can right click on them to add them to your favorites and then it'll put it under either Mental Ray or Maya under favorites. So I'm going to create one file, that's the only other file we'll need, but we're going to be creating, I believe, five ramps, five different textures out of this one file. And we're going to use that, we're going to do that by using ramps. So we're going to apply, you'll see Earth Specular Invert. Now, on the NASA website, you'll get this. I just went in Photoshop and I inverted it, made that, and then I just include both of them for whatever you might need them for. I also did that with the clouds, which you can see are targets because they needed that extra bit of information. Which actually, I don't think I need them to, them to be targets anymore. These can just be JPEGs because I figured out a new way to do it. They don't need to be targets. So that's pretty cool. I might actually change that. Um, so yeah, invert right here. Now let's go ahead and just create a ramp. We can get rid of the place 2D back here. We don't need that. Because <clears throat> we're literally just going to use the ramp to adjust the black and white values and like kind of where uh, their, their threshold and their value, basically, to make, uh, to kind of give it um, where like this, you see reflectivity only is one channel. It affects, it, it, it affects just the entire sphere, the entire material. Using this, we can manipulate we can manipulate the blacks and whites of that file by using the, the the sliders on the ramp and we can set those to different values so like if you had a 0 0.05 um, for like right here if you had, this was at 0 0.05 in the ramp that means that it would be 0 0.5 oh, my bad that means it would be 0 0.05 glossy and then we, but we can also set that depending on that channel. And you can have, I believe, a few different. You can make this a color graph, like make it like green, um, blue, red, and pink, and stuff like that. And I believe you can 
manipulate all of those together in just one ramp. So to do this, we're just going to open up the color, and we're just going to take the out color R and plug it into U chord right there. And now, if we solo this guy, <clears throat> nothing showed up. That's because you need to change the type to U ramp. There we go. I believe the same thing will actually work if you put it into V chord. I just always do U chord. I don't know. It's on top. But you'll see something's messed up here. We're in the mental ray. Um, material viewer, we're in mental ray. There's also hardware. This is what we want it to look like. We don't want it to look like this. For some reason, mental ray is like, ah. Uh, and it took me a while to figure this out. But that's color space sRGB. It doesn't process. It's not processing that properly when it's converting all the math. All the maths that it's using to make this, it's not quite converting that right, so we're just going to change it to raw. So it doesn't have to do that calculation, it's just raw. Just give me what I, it, yeah, the whole thing, it's right there, just raw. Okay, so now you can see we got all these sweet details in there, and we can actually, let's go ahead and plug this in. This is going to be our reflection, so we're going to, this is going to be our reflectivity map, so we're just going to plug that in. And I did that, so I can hit the solo button on here. And there we go. We can see it on here. And this is really cool because you can see the, uh, the, out, the outlines of the rivers and everything. So we want the ocean, right, the white, which is all white, to be more reflective than the land. Because right now, um, well, you can't see it, but right now, how it is, is the land and the ocean, they're all the same reflectivity. Well, that's not true because the land is dirt, right, super, uh, super, basically chalk, really not reflective at all where the land is water, really super reflective. Okay, so we are going to... Okay, we're going to move this slider. Okay, you can see right here on the top of North America, kind of right here. There's a lot of land up there that's pretty white. We don't want that to be super white. We're going to move this black ramp in, because this, this black slider represents all that is black on here. So you can see by moving that in, that it gets rid of that. You see that it gets rid of all some of those details in there. I don't want to go too far because I still want to keep this right here. I want to keep these rivers. So you don't want to go too far, but you can come in with this as well to kind of really make those stand out. And you can come in with this one here as well. So I'm going to do this way. Maybe a little bit more. No, I think I'm going to just keep this all the way over here. I want that that gradient of gray in there to kind of blend between the two. You see there's gray. We'll just kind of cut that off a little bit. Not Nothing too much. There, it's not going to be a huge difference between the two. That's too much. I really want to see these more than anything. It's going to add a lot. So we'll just take that down to like 0 0.025. 2, 5. Or just 2. Or change that to 5. Because it's going to bug me. Alright. Perfect. Now we're going to change this to reflect. Alright. This is going to be our reflection map. Now we can set the values. Now we're going to want the earth to be, or the land to be slightly reflective, not too much. So we're going to set the value. Now just, this is pretty much as if you were typing it into the reflectivity bar of the material. The same exact thing. You want this to be point, how oh, about point one, two five. You see that turned out all gray, slightly gray. Very little reflectivity, but it is a little reflective. Just a little bit we want. And now this is going to be the water. And now we want this to be super reflective, but one is way too reflective. I'm going to change this down way, quite a bit, actually, for 0.6. There we go. See, that just kind of brought those two together a little bit. And now if we look in here, you'll see 1.125. And that's because this only reads the first channel, which is this one right here. Whatever is the farthest to the left is the first channel. This only reads that channel. All right, so now we're going to create another one. I'm just going to control D. I should make another one. Yep. So if you have that, that node selected and hit Control-D, it just makes another one. All right, and now this is going to be our gloss channel. Okay, and pretty much the same thing. Let's, open, let's just keep that open. I'm going to take this and plug it right into u -cord And yeah, there we go. All right, and then we're going to click this here, and we are going to dump it in glossiness. Now it still says 0.125. That's actually not quite okay. Let me change a little bit. Change this to 16 to see a little better quality when rendering. Back into our gloss. I'm going to actually turn this down. I like to keep my glossy slightly lower in my reflection. So we'll say 0 0.05. All right. And this as well. We'll take this down to, I think I did a 0.4. Maybe 0.425 would be good. Okay. So now we have our glossy channel and our reflective channels hooked up.
You can see that. All that is taken care of. Beautiful. Our reflective color, we want that to be white. You can maybe change that to like a subtle, like a subtle yellow or a subtle blue, depending on if you want it warmer or colder. Alright, next we are gonna work on refraction. Okay. Let's go ahead and solo this out. Now we should be able to get actually a pretty decent preview. Yeah, you can see you can see how that hot spot right there. That's I mean that's kind of what it's gonna look like. Not 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 really, actually. Because what you see in here is basically hardware render 2.0. And we're rendering in Mentoray, so that's gonna that's gonna look quite a bit better in Mentoray. But what you can see is how you can see that this is glossy, but when that gets over the land, it goes dull, which is pretty cool. But when it goes over that lake, it's glossy again. See, that's pretty sweet. Those ripples are huge. If any of those ripples were actual wave on the Great Lakes, I am pretty sure all the surrounding cities like Superior and Duluth, especially right here in Minnesota, where I'm from, would be destroyed. But that's a pretty cool fact. If we come down here to the rivers and use that. You can see how that gets shiny in there. It's a really cool effect. Okay. Now, we are going to work on the water. What I mean by that is, I'm going to create a new ramp node. Delete that. I'm going to make the water slightly transparent. Actually, it's going to be fully transparent, but then it's going to fall off into solid by using max depth because water is actually transparent and it just kind of adds a little bit of a cool effect not necessarily when you're far away but when you get up close to the to the earth for renders it'll look way cool that way okay so this is going to be my I spell that right? transparency yeah this is going to be my transparency node okay and we are going to plug again just the same guy into it, just like so. But we are going to, again, what am I doing? Oh yeah, gotta change that to U. Okay, we are going, and if you want to change this to hardware, just so it updates a little faster, that's what I like to do. I'm gonna crank this up quite a bit this time. And get rid of one of those. Quite a bit, I really just wanna see the Great Lakes. Something like, oh, Something like 0.75 should work. The Great Lakes and whatever this lake is over here, and some other, some, you know, not all of the details when it comes to transparency. All right, now I'm gonna close that. <clears throat> I'm not gonna plug that in yet, because when I plug that in, it cuts out all the ocean, and you will never see it again in the render view. I'm gonna create one more ramp shader. I believe there's even one more after this yet. I'm not 100. I can't remember entirely. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yes, roughness. I forgot that. We need to create. We're going to create a roughness mod. We're going to call this one rough. And there's one more yet after this. Okay, and we're going to use this since it's already been compressed how we want it to be. Open up UV bar. There we go. And we're going to take it right from this one into this one. Works the same way. Just change it to U ramp. There we go. And now all we're going to do is just change the values of these. So this would be the land value of roughness, and we want that to be about a 0.05. Maybe 0 0.06, or not 0 0.06, 0 0.6. Okay, and we want this to actually be the other way around. This is going to be darker than the land. Point, but a 0.3. That's what I like to do. There we go. Okay, and then we'll come to the material and just middle mouse drag. That's what I've been doing, middle mouse drag. If I didn't say that, I don't know. Middle mouse drag this to our roughness channel. There we go. And you can see that the land has got a 0 0.6, and then the water has a 0 0.3 roughness. Okay, I'm going to click Graph this. I'm going to right-click Graph Network. If you Graph Network, it gets rid of anything that is not attached to this. So make sure that you don't do that unless everything is attached. Or if things aren't attached, you can just click this button here. And it will then um, just graph everything, but it won't get rid of anything if it's not attached to this. Okay. Next. That's our roughness map plugged in. Okay, we can get rid of that. We don't need that. Okay, I'm gonna create one more, one more ramp we need. Last texture, I promise. Well, for ramps, anyways. Is this one is going to be our index of refraction? I O R. Now you guys don't have to do all this transparency stuff. I just like to do it. I'm gonna show you how to do it, so it's no big deal. And again, we're gonna plug it from the transparency into the U port. And there we go. And turn this into U ramp. There we go. Alright, now we want this, now we, 
with the index of refraction is it's going to be right here. This just kind of actually let's let's go ahead and plug the transparency in now so you can see what that does. Boom! Everything should go away, and we need to be a mental ray. There we go. Now you can see that it kind of looks like a marble, right? How it the light hits it and then it bends, right? What the index of refraction does is it controls that amount of bend. So water, if you hover over this, you can see that it will say water is 1.33, where diamond is 2.42. So we want 1.33, right? But now if we type that in here, that means the whole land and water is going to be 1.33. We don't want that. So we're going to create a map. So we want the land to be no index of refraction, because it's not going to refract at all. We want the water to be... Now it says only one, it can go up higher. It's just going to get brighter. So you can just see it just gets a little brighter. 1.33, that's what the water's at. And then we'll just go ahead and minimize drag this into index of refraction. It's going to say zero, it's not zero, I promise. All right, and now we are going to need to apply a color to this. Let me click that, there we go. I'm just going to click this cyan and just kind of work my way down a little darker from there. I like to keep it pretty bright and a little darker, a little more washed out. I like to keep this pretty bright because using it, um, what we're going to use next kind of tends to make it get pretty dark. So that, that works for me. Um, oh, not what I meant to do. And now we're going to want to open Advanced Refraction, and we want to, want to use Max Distance. Now what this does, again, it lets the light penetrate to a certain depth, and then it goes black. Just like the ocean does, you can only see, when you look into like a lake or the ocean or some kind of body of water, you can only see so far down before it just gets black. That's what this does. And we're going to use a color at the max distance, so I'm just going to use that blue. And maybe make it a little bit more rich in color, a little darker here. And just make it a little slightly darker. Something like that. Not too much darker. All right, and then I'm going to change this to like a 0 .005, so like half of the distance down that the clouds are up. And now that's going to go completely black. Not black, but dark. You could probably lighten this up if you went like this, and like this. I believe that will slightly lighten it. It won't really show much up here. But that's everything. I believe, that's, I believe that is the entire Earth Day shader. I'm not going to say that one. All right, so we're going to graph the network, and this is the entire Earth shader, right here, or Earth Day shader, right here. Now, the Earth Night is not going to be much more complex. It's pretty much the same thing, but we don't have to recreate all this stuff. We can just reuse it. But first, let's do a quick render. Let's come over here and make sure we're on perspective and render that out. All right, everything's looking pretty good. You can see how that kind of filled it out over here on the edges. That's because the light, when it hits, um, it kind of scatters it a little bit, bit, very subtly, to kind of just bring out the fullness of the ocean. Could maybe be a little bit more reflective, and that bump isn't really showing up all that well. You guys can probably play with that a little more later. That, that hot spot is pretty large. I'd maybe shrink that down to something a little smaller. Anyways, that only took 9 seconds to render. That's not too bad, but that was only one shader. So, what else we need to do? We need to create the night shader. So let's create me material X passes, another one. Let's put it right over here next to our day. And let's call it earth underscore night underscore me material X passes. There we go. Perfect. And now I'm going to take our earth surface and I'm going to apply it to that. There we go. You can see fresh, nothing there. Perfect. Now what we're going to do with the color is we're going to make it completely dark, 100% black. There we go. And now we can just start plugging in nodes. We're going to take uh, our gloss, and we'll plug that right into the gloss channel. And that'll let, you'll see a line come out and attach to that. Same with our roughness. Plug that right into the roughness channel. It's because whatever's going to be at the... Oh, I don't need to click on them. Whatever's going to be on the night side, as far as this stuff goes, is going to be on the night side. So index of refraction is going to be the same. Reflectivity is going to be the same. And transparency is going to be the same. I believe that's all of them. Did I get them all? Oh, and bumps. Now we can come down here, open up our bump tab, and we can do land bump, which is the overall bump, and ocean bump, which is our standard bump. There we go. Now that's all we had to do. Almost. There's a couple of things we have to do. First, we have to do this. So max distance, yeah, 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 0 0.005. Um, you guys can play with that number too. I don't. It might do uh, slight variations, um, make things look a little different. 
uh, but I'm not going to mess with it too much. You don't want to do it too much, because if you do it too much, it's going to look like the earth is hollow, and you're going to see it's going to look weird on the edges, so don't do it too much. It's very subtle. Okay, and then we want to change our color. Um, I don't know if I have these colors saved. What you can do here is you can, if you click on the color, and then you close it out right away, the next color that shows up is going to be the last color you, you had open. See, so if you open it again, now both blues are there, because we had them both open. So we just go to night like that. Go here, this is the first color we looked at, which is that one. And this color is going to be that color there. Alright. I believe that is all set up. Perfection. Okay, now to get to the color of the night, what we are going to do is not put the color here, because the color here is just going to be, it's going to be black. It won't show up because it's not getting any light. It's the whole point of it being on the night side. Right? So we needed to kind of self-illuminate a little bit. So done under advanced, the one under bump, you'll see something called additional color. And if you hover over it, you'll see that it says can be used for self-illumination effects, which means that it will kind of give it off its own light slightly. And that's what we want, because we want we want to be able to see the land a little bit. Now, realistically, you won't really be able to see the land. Um, you might a little bit from like how the light curves around inside the atmosphere. Um, and that's kind of the effect we want to go with. So we want our land to kind of self-illuminate itself so we can slightly see it. Otherwise, in Maya, it's just going to be pitch black if you try to use the color node or the color channel. So we are going to just, and I'm going to do this a little, um, I'm going to actually create this additional color by using two different files. So I'm going to do a layer texture so I can layer those two files together. And I'm going to create two files. Why does it do that? Way down there. And another file way down here. I'm assuming, let's just click this. It should bring them all. No, it didn't move it. Whatever. Okay. Now in here, in a layered file, a layer texture node, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a Photoshop, like layers in Photoshop. You know, this top layer, over here, bottom layer. You just click in here to make new layers. We only need two, so I'm going to get rid of all these. By default, they're green. So we're going to do put the color in here just as if it's anything else, but we already have these made. So we're going to open this up, and it should take us right to here. We want Earth Night Color. This is our night color. You can see it, but it's really bright, right? We don't want it that bright. But first, let me just apply, apply it into here, just middle mouse right on top of color. You can see it right there. Let's go ahead and apply this in here, just so we can get it on the globe, an additional color. Now, the hardware renderer over here in the viewport doesn't register this advanced stuff at all. So whatever you see over here is going to be right here. Well, that's weird. Why is it showing day stuff? And night stuff, it shouldn't be doing that. Oh, haha, that's why. Whoops, let's go ahead and do this. Let's delete that. I apply that to the day shader. I want to apply that to the night shader. My bad. Okay, try that again. There we go. And now you'll see that pop up right there. And now it's slightly self illuminating itself, but in my opinion, it's way too bright. I'm going to take that down to like negative 5, I believe I did. Maybe it was just negative 3. So I'm at negative 3 exposure. Now it got a lot darker. More, more natural, more realistic. Alright. And I did that just coming in here into, into where you apply its file. Under color balance, you'll see exposure. Just drop that down a little bit if you want. Now over here, now that's going to be the bottom layer. We're going to have a layer come on top of it. Now to do that, just click create another layer. Middle mouse drag that above that um, previous one. And that's how you move it. Middle mouse dragging is how you pretty much move any kind of file in Maya. And we want this one to be that. Now we're going to find this. And it's going to be Earth Night Lights right here. But this is basically just a black and white map where the lights on the map, uh, let's solo this here, the lights on the map are white and the everything else is black. So we can kind of enhance the lights that we need to. Because we could just, now you can see here that there are built-in lights to this map, but by us taking it down the exposure, it really made them, you can see right here, it really made them kind of dull and boring and plain. And they're supposed to illuminate a little bit, right? So we're going to enhance those just a little bit. So we're going to come over here, and we're just going to plop that right on top. And you're going to see they're going to be quite a bit brighter. And you're going to see they're going to be quite a bit brighter. Oh, i got to select it. There we go. <laughs> All right. And you'll see they're quite a bit brighter. That's just because they're 100% white. But now our land's gone. So we have to layer this. So we come back into layer textures, and we have to choose our blend mode, which I believe is add. Yes. Now you can see that the lights stay the same, but now our, our that, that deep blue of the land kind of came popping through. Right there. 
that you can see that's popping through and now we still have our lights but like before these lights are too way too intense I took these down to like negative 1.5 still brought them down they're still pretty bright I also applied a color to it um, I just went with yellow here and then I just went with like a point point two just give a little bit of a yellow tone to it not too oh well, didn't do anything point two there we go so a little bit of a yellow tone to it a little bit of yellow tint because all the all the lights in the seas are halogen you know halogen gives off yellow light so that's what we want there we'll just switch light and just go to color there we go that's all applied perfect let's go ahead and graph our night network and you can see it right there that is everything for the night let's go ahead and give this a render shall we I can't see the shadow. I'm gonna try to see where the shadow is, but I can't see it. Whatever. We'll just look at America. We'll look at this. We'll look at kind of right here in the ocean, so we can see all of that right there. All right. Let's go ahead and give this a really quick render. Let's save this one by clicking that one and just click render. Shouldn't take too long. A couple seconds. All right. There we go. Now it looks kind of weird because it's like in the daylight, it's night with lights. It won't look like that. You kind of have to. Actually, what we should have done is probably come to the back of the uh, of the globe. Let's take a render here. Let's just save that one and render here. This is this is in pitch blackness. Now there's no light hitting this side at all. As you can see that where the the light ends right up here. Okay. Now this is the pitch black where it kind of illuminates itself, which would slightly happen. This could, the land could even go a little darker. Honestly, it could be a little darker if we really wanted it to. But those lights are really popping out nice. And I think that looks just fine. If you guys want to mess with that a little more, go for it. All right, now we need to create the shader that is going to blend the earth with the night, or the, the earth with the night, the day with the night. Um, and to do that, we are going to use a ramp shader. Let's go ahead and bring this guy out. Pull it right up here. This is super simple. Super, super simple. Earth night we have right there. We want to bring out earth day as well. So there we go. We can see all the connections it's made. Earth night. Earth Day, and our ramp shader. I'm going to go ahead and name this real quick. Maybe Earth, score night, underscore, and then day first. And underscore RS for ramp shader. Okay. Now I'm going to show you guys what this does. I'm going to take Earth's surface and apply it to the ramp shader. There we go. Now we should just see pretty much a Lambert ball. Open this up. Now what this does is let's go ahead and we're going to make two channels with this ramp so we're going to select the color we'll do let's say how about green or we'll say dark blue and then we'll say green right here all right now you can see that there's light right here kind of blends into the blue but you can't see much that's because we need to change light angle we don't want it to be on light angle you want it to be on brightness so wherever it's the brightest is where one texture is going to be the green and wherever there's no light is going to be the other texture, which in this case is blue. So what we see here is that green is representing the day, and depending on our light angle, and the blue is representing the night. Again, depending on where the light source is coming from. That's what we want. So how this is, just like with the, the ramp shaders, this is zero channel, and this is the one channel. Now if we come in here, we open up color, you can see color zero, and color one. What we want to do is plug these into the color color of the color. It's kind of confusing, but that's what we want to do. So to do that, again, our night is channel zero. So we're going to click. Um, we're going to come over here to the result. This result is the result of everything in this shader. Is the output right here? The result. Plug that into color color of color zero. And same thing here. Plug that into color color of color one. There we go. Now. The, the hardware render is like, what just happened? It doesn't know what's going on. It just went black. So, I mean, yeah. You won't be able to see what you're looking at anymore, which kind of sucks. But, no big deal. You could create a separate shader with just like a quick, like a, like a quick Lambert with the earth texture on it, just so you can switch that real quick to see where you are when you're making scenes. But if you're trying to rely on this, you won't be able to see anything. Just a black ball, because it doesn't know what to think anymore. Let's go ahead and collapse the color. All right, I'm actually going to save this. I don't want crashes and stuff. So I'm going to file, save scene as, and we're just going to name this uh, test. 
continue. Okay, and then next like that. All right, and then back up. Now let's go ahead and let's graph this network. There we go. That is our entire Earth surface day night cycle shader right there. That entire com that entire combination. You don't need all these, such as the IOR and the transparency. You don't even need the rough and the reflect. Um, you could just simply plug in that Earth spec invert straight into the reflected color and then adjust them both that way. But even then, it's not quite as much, um, uh, not, not as much freedom when you, and you want, like, details. You can't adjust as many details that way, basically. All right. That is our Earth shader. Let's go ahead and give this a quick render. So we know that the light is about here. Again, this is this is why this is so hard. Okay, we know that the light is about you know there where that's kind of reflecting. Just kind of go like that. And hopefully we hopefully we hit some land and some, on both sides. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, you can kind of see it a little bit. I kind of missed the day side. You can see the land up there a little bit. It's you know it's slightly. Uh, you can see how the land is in day. It's the, the the day land is showing and with the ice up there. And then over here you can see the night. So it's working fantastic. Next we are going to work on the clouds. So that is done. We don't, shouldn't have to worry about that anymore. You guys can fiddle with the settings all you want. I'm gonna leave it as is, and I'm gonna move on to the clouds. So for the clouds, all we need to do is create one blend and one. Actually, we'll just start with the blend. I'm just going to grab this network for the blend. I'm just going to call this Earth Clouds. Okay. All right. Now, we need to just... Yeah, we need to do our transparency map. So we're going to go ahead and right up here off transparency. So I'm going to create a file. Dar is now playing Dota 2. All right, this is going to be our transparency map, and we are going to load. With the blend, you have to load the invert. Uh, I'm not going to explain why. It's just because of how it looks at it. The white is what is being affected. The black is what's not being affected. So whatever is black stays. Whatever is white go is going to be transparent. And the black is going to be the color of whatever color we set it. So we want the alpha invert here. And we should be able to... Well, yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and hide the surface and bring up the clouds, and then let's also apply that to Earth clouds one. And you can see right here in the little in the little render preview, it's kind of transparent up there. Don't need this to be a target anymore. All right, let's look at this. Change this to you. There we go. Now we can adjust how much clouds we want covered. Okay, so at default, I'm just gonna leave that default to show you what that does. Again, with the out into the trans. Oh, no, this is someone we need the entire color for transparency. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna click graph this for the clouds. There we go. Alright, this is what it would look like on default. And we are just going to. I'm actually, I'm actually, I actually am going to bring this back. But we're gonna take this and just apply it to the Lambert right here. And we're gonna take the Lambert down a little bit in color. A little bit more. There we go just so we can see what we're looking at here. That looks about right. Okay, that should be about where the North America is, I believe. We're going to give that a quick render and see what that looks like. It should. It might take a little longer. Well, with the Lambert, it won't take any longer. But you can see, oh, I'm like looking for North America. I don't even have a texture applied. So yeah, you can see right here, there's our, our, our clouds applied right here. That looks pretty good. Um, now you can come in here if you don't want as many clouds, leave that where it's at, okay, and let's go ahead and grab that, there we go, and come after this, and you can play with this, basically just play with this white slider, and bring it down, and you can see that in the render preview too, you can see how we're getting rid of some of those clouds, and bringing them back, and getting rid of them, and bringing them back, and getting rid of them. So yeah, you can do that if you don't want as many cloud, as much cloud coverage. I think that what is default is maybe a little too much. You can't really see much underneath the clouds. There's a lot of cloud coverage. I like to bring that down just a little bit. Not too crazy, just a little bit. Close those off. Also, what looks good is you can apply a bump to this. If you want a very subtle bump, because, you know, clouds are bumpy. 
when you see them from space um, or anywhere. <laughs> so we can go ahead and apply a bump and a file and I'm just going to do it a separate file. You actually, never mind. I'm not. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to use the same ramp. Or the same color, but I'm going to use a different ramp. I'm sorry. And ramp. There we go. Oh, it finally put it in the place where I needed it. So we're just going to take, we're going to go here and we're going to drop this into the bump value. Take the out color from this texture. Take the out. There we go. Open this UV cord and plug this into that right there. And we're just going to delete. We're going to delete. It's being slow. Where did this go? There we go. Okay, I want to delete that. Now I want the whole thing. Z back. Delete that one. There we go. Why is it being so slow? I don't know. Okay. There we go. Change this to you. Let's go ahead and solo that so we can see what we're looking at now. Now I want to bring these values closer to each other. I want to bring them closer to gray. 50% gray. Ah. Bring these clo values closer. So you have very subtle bumps. Okay, but I'm going to bring this way up. And bring this way up. Okay. I'm kind of confused on which ones are staying. Okay. That's good. And then bring this down. Just subtle. Very subtle. So we want that to be a little brighter. We want that to pop up. Because that's going to be the cloud. So we want that to go up. Okay. We want the rest of it to kind of go down. Just something like that. Maybe a little bump like that. Actually, this one could stay. No. Never mind. That's fine. We can bring this down a little more, actually. Kind of make that effect a little more dramatic. All right. And we're going to want to set this value. We can look at this. Solo this real quick. See what this is going to look like. Okay. Yeah. That value is crazy high. Take that way down. Try like a 0.1 and see what that looks like. Still crazy high. Alright. 0.05. Um, that's a little better. I think that's still crazy high. 0 0.025. Yeah, we'll just go with that for now and see what that looks like. Again, it should just add a subtle effect to it. Okay. And now from here, it should be transparent. There we go. And now you can see there's a subtle effect to that guy. One more thing that we didn't do, that I forgot to do, is that the cloud needs to be completely transparent. Every, or clean, yeah, completely transparent. So we need to kill the specularity, color, all the uh, eccentricity, the rollout, the reflectivity, bring it all down. Otherwise, whatever is being transparent or being like, in between the clouds, the part that you want to see through, is going to have that sheen to it, and we don't want that to happen. So bring it all the way down. And that's pretty much, that's almost everything for the cloud coverage. One more thing is I said that ramp shader we need. Bring in a ramp shader. This is going to drive the color. This is going to drive the color of the of the clouds. Also for the proper time of day for the clouds. So again, we're going to bring this to balance. All right, this is going to be our day color, and this is going to be our night color. So at night we're going to have some. I mean, the clouds would pretty much be black, but we're going to change it to like a purple over here a little bit. Make this super dark. Pretty much like that. A little bit more color. So some nice dark, almost midnighty purple. That looks really good. Now we're going to want to change this to white. The clouds are white, but not 100% white. Something like 0.9. Okay. And now let's go ahead and plug this puppy straight into the clouds. Okay. And now to do this, we are going to actually. Why didn't that dash? Oh, because I used the wrong one. I grabbed the blue one. Make sure you grab the right one. It should plug right into the clouds, just like so. All right, not, not a huge difference. There we go. We see it applied. Now you'll see right here at the edge how that transitions from that white all the way to the purple. Now, it, the transition takes too long to happen. In my opinion, we want that to be more of a sharper transition. So we're going to move, you can see here, we're going to move the purple actually up very slightly. But we're going to move this way back. Okay, and move it up a little more. I want that to be a more like a, of a sudden transition in color. All right, this should be good. That might be a little much. Like four, it's a four. I like to use all numbers. I don't like when it's like three, three, nine. No, we're just gonna get three fifty. Like why not, right? Okay, 
That should be better. This actually can't be point to fifty. Yeah, you can see a little bit of purple in there. That should that should work good. So now that means that it's gonna be you know daylight clouds fading into dark purple clouds. This is mostly on the back side. You're really not gonna be able to see clouds. This is mostly just to get that nice subtle fading effect. If you didn't have this and it was just white, it would be white, 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 nothing. We want that slight subtle fade. So that's how you do that. Now that now that should be everything for the clouds. I'm gonna go ahead and graph this network, and that is everything for the clouds. Let's go ahead and apply the Earth's surface, and let's just, we're just going to do the day, because I don't want to take forever um, rendering the, the, um, is that a fly? Should that have showed up? Earth day, image here, Earth passes. Oh, that's because that's solar. Right? 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 Why is that not showing up? Earth clouds. Signed Earth surface to Earth day. Well, whatever. It should render. Let's just go ahead and give this a shot and see what we get here. This should be about where North America is. And render. Alright, there we go. Now you can see right here all that subtle fade off into into black. That's what that's kind of basically what we were looking for by using the ramp shader is that sudden fade off into black, right there. Otherwise, it would have just stayed white until about here, and then it would have just cut off immediately. We don't want that. We want that nice transition into black. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave it there. Again, if you guys want to mess with that, go for it. That is good enough for this tutorial. Lastly, but not least, is we're gonna hide the clouds. And we're going to bring up the atmosphere. Okay, now there's quite a few ways to do the atmosphere. Quite a few ways. But we are just going to do a simple way. I'm just going to show you, I'll, I'll tell you one of the ways. You can do it in the Create, um, volume, uh, Volumetric Materials, and Light Fog. You can use this shader right here. Um, where to go? Right here. Right here. No, um, not Light Fog. I'm sorry, wrong one. Create. Volumetric materials, volume fog. That's what I'm looking for. Um, you can use this right here, node, um, put these settings to create kind of. It actually would work nicely if you use the volume fog and the other way I'm about to show you in conjunction with each other because the volume fog will give the earth kind of a nice dissipating, like a glow effect on the outside of the atmosphere. Where what I'm going to show you gives it a kind of a nice kind of glow effect, a, a nice, like, transparent effect for the atmosphere. I'm going to keep that up there. I probably won't use it at all, but I'm just going to keep it up there. What we do want to create is we are going to start this out with a surface shader. Right here. One of these guys. Super simple, super basic black shader. Okay, we're just going to grab this network. And I'm just going to call this here Earth underscore Earth underscore surface shader. Right. Oh, that's why that had a one after. I forgot to put what it actually was. Underscore balloon. All right. I don't. Uh, well, that, that that's okay. This ramp shader came from. That was part of the clouds. So that's right. Okay. Clouds underscore ramp shader. See, that's why you want to name things because it can get start getting super confusing. Alright, we're at Earth Atmosphere Surface Shader. So we're going to take the atmosphere and I'm just going to apply it to it just like so. And I'm going to keep the Earth surface up just so we have something to look at, but kill some of that rendering time by getting rid of the clouds for now. So what we want to do with this guy is I want to open this up and I want to find favorites ramp shader. Just like the clouds. Okay, just like the clouds, our atmosphere is going to be driven by a ramp shader but not by brightness, by facing angle. Because when you look at the atmosphere, well, let me get this going real quick so it'll kind of show what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to say. When you look at the atmosphere, we'll do something like this. There we go. Okay, when you look at the atmosphere, what you're looking at, if you're looking at it straight on, the straight on effect, you're looking at the least amount, you're looking through the least amount of atmosphere. When you look at the edges of the atmosphere, you're looking through the most. So. You, so that's why you're able to see more of it because you're looking through more of it. So it should look thinner, 
in the center. You should be able to see through it more. That's why we want it to be facing angle. So wherever you look, you can see that in the center is going to be the least amount of atmosphere because you're looking through the least amount of atmosphere. Where on the edges, you're looking through the most amount of atmosphere. So we're, that blue is kind of dull. We're going to make it a little bit more of a rich blue. We're just going to come to this. We're going to move this a little bit, not too much. Come down this way. A little bit of a washed out look. Kind of a haze look here. Well, I'm trying to keep it rich, though. A little darker, maybe? Something like that. That that works. Good enough. And we're going to want to make this black. Right, that's like so. And we're going to want to create, right here, transparency. It's important. Just make that white. I don't know if that's white. That's white. Something like that. You know, and, I, and then by playing with these sliders, it's going to adjust this. It's going to adjust what this all looks like here. So I'm just going to set up something super quick here if I can. Oh, that's too much. I'm going to keep that all the way at the end. I want that to fade nicely. And that isn't bad. It's a little too much. There you go. Looking a little better. Something, something kind of like that. Kind of like that. That's all right. Also, what we're going to what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to kill the specularity and the eccentricity. Otherwise, that's going to show up even though you can't see it. You're still going to see that that hot spot. You don't want that. I'm also just going to turn that to black. Basically, shut it off. Turn that all the way down. Turn that all the way down. How about something so small? All right, there we go. Basically, shuts all that stuff off. And now we can just play with these sliders right here to get the, the look that we want. Now let's go ahead and just give that a quick render. I believe I have everything applied properly. I clearly don't. Why do I not? Oh, that's right. I believe under the surface shader, that has to be 100% transparent. There we go. Yeah, that has to be 100% transparent with the surface shader. Let's try that again. There we go. This should work. Yeah. There we go. There we go. And now you can see we have a pretty basic atmosphere, nothing super crazy beautiful. Um, that would come from really playing with this right here. So what you can do, okay, now, like obviously you can see here, this is playing with the edges of the atmosphere, and this is playing with the middle of the atmosphere, or uh, of what you see. So like at the edges, what's going to happen? Things are going to get a little whiter towards the edges, because that's how the sun works, right? The sun, the, the light goes through the atmosphere, it's going to get a little redder, right? So we want to maybe come over here and make a little pink. Actually, well, let's go ahead and make a red. Kind of a red one, like what you would see at sunset. A little darker, maybe. Very subtle. Something just like that. Now let's go ahead and create another one. You can see it, that kind of that in-between pink. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit more... Not quite purple, but more of a washed-out blue. There we go. Something like that. That might be a little much yet. A nice fading effect there. Actually, bring these two pretty close to each other. A nice fade effect like so. Alright, let's try something like that. But let's come over here. So you're looking at this, right? So you'll see the atmosphere right here, all the way around, but there is no atmosphere at night. And you won't be able to see the atmosphere at night because there's no reflect there's no sun or light to reflect off of it. So we'll do something like this to kind of see what we got going on here. That might be a little strong at the edge there, huh? That might be a little too strong at the edge. We'll see. Alright, we'll just do a quick render. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, so that doesn't look too bad. It could definitely look better, but it doesn't look terrible. Um, some more tweaking will really refine that. Um, one more thing we have to do is we have to move this. Um, with the atmosphere mesh selected, we are going to have to go into its attributes. Um, uh, Earth attribute shape right here, and we're going to render stats. We're going to want to get rid of double-sided. You see all that weirdness is happening right there? It's allowing the light to kind of like bounce around inside. We don't want that to happen. I want to just get rid of that, and that should clean that up. Take that off of double-sided. Alright, let's move that back up here. And we'll give that another render. Alright, yeah, you can see now how that just kind of fades into black. Fades into nothing. 
So that doesn't look terrible. I'm just going to leave that as is. Again, you guys can play with it however you want. Um, actually, I am going to do one thing. It's kind of bugging me. This is way too orange. I am going to bring this more or less down to like a pink and way more subtle. Something like that. Transition into it. Again, right here, a lot of blue. Pull this back. Uh, pull this up a little bit more. Something like that. And this kind of just creates the edges of the atmosphere. All right. No more messing around with that stuff. Let's go ahead and bring back the clouds. Um. Actually, if we can, let's. I'm gonna hide these both. I lied. Earth surface. I really want this to show up so I can just see what I'm doing for two seconds. I probably have something clicked that I just don't notice I have clicked for why these won't show up. Hmm. I want to get a nice posing shot, but I can't. Okay, we'll create materials super, super quick. Right here, quick Lambert. Let's go ahead and go to the color really quickly. File. And of that file, we're just going to do Earth Day color. There we go. And now we're going to go over here. Just so I can set the shot up and apply this to the Lambert 2. Right there. Apply it to Lambert 2. Alright, so something's going on here where I'm not able to see anything, and I don't know why. If you guys see it, let me know, but I really don't know why I can't see anything. Oh, God. Am I just overlooking it? Or why it's not showing up over here? Is something selected, maybe? It should be showing up. If I go to Met Hardware, see? It, yeah, it should be showing up. But it's not. Great. I guess I'm, I guess I'm guessing. I guess I'm guessing. So Earth Surface, just go ahead and I'm gonna apply that to the ramp, or, or the ramp shader. Make sure this is applied to the blend, and then make sure this is applied. Oops. Bring this back. Shift H to bring it back if I didn't say that yet. And to the surface shader atmosphere right there. Alright. Earth should be all done and set up. And good to go. Go ahead and. Oh boy. So I'd say it needs to slightly go like this. Maybe a little bit. And down a little bit. I don't know. I don't know why that's not moving the clouds either. That was weird. Slightly rotate this a little bit. Let's see what we get with that. We'll just work on that right there. Get really close in on it. Back a little bit. All right. I'm just gonna grab this. Clean that up. Now let's do a really quick render. And render. This really quick render is probably gonna be like a minute or so. All right, not too bad. Um, we completely missed North America. That's like right here. We can do maybe another one right here real quick. I'll just fast forward these so they don't take forever. We'll just do another render right here. See what we get with this one. And render. All right. There we go. That looks that looks pretty good. Um, it does. It could definitely use some work with refining some of these um, per, uh, parameters with all these different nodes and materials. But I'm not going to do that. I'll let you guys do that. Um, render times won't take you quite this long. Well, they will depending on your system. But they're taking me a little longer now because I'm also recording 4K video um, with OBS software. So things are going to take a little longer because I'm recording. But you can see how it transitions nicely from the day uh, material over here to the night over here, um, the nice atmosphere, how it kind of fades off, and the clouds fade nicely right here as well. So that's about it. That's pretty much how you make Earth with uh, just a couple of spheres and a buttload of shaders. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys have any other things you guys want to see me do in Maya, um, any tutorials, um, modeling, whatever you want to see, just let me know in the description. Also, I'll put my uh, my Twitter link in there so you guys can hit me up on Twitter if you have any um, any questions on any of this ask me at any time I'll probably most definitely uh, respond so hit me up on Twitter 
Um, post your pictures up on Twitter. You know, tag me in them. Whatever. Let me see what you guys, what you guys, what you guys created using this tutorial. But again, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. Got plenty of videos that I plan on doing with Maya coming up. So again, thank you guys uh, for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.